Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Pray First, the conversation we have Monday through Friday, right here on the Pastor Doug page. Hope you guys are ready. Hope you got your coffee with you. Get you some paper and a pen. Uh, I noticed that one of my friends and one of our fellow Pray Firsters uh, yesterday said that they needed to have a notebook and a pen with them, so I want to encourage all of you guys to get a notebook and a pen and write this stuff down so that you can look back over the days previous and catch up to where we are now. I also would like to take this opportunity to tell you, if you are two days behind, in other words, there was two other days of this teaching, and you missed either one of them or you missed both of them, you really need to go back and watch those. Uh, listen to them in the car. Listen to them as you get ready, but you need to go back and watch those so that you can catch up to where we are. We're talking about the end of an age. We're talking about the end of time. In the beginning, if there was a beginning, there will be an ending. There will be a conclusion. There will be a finality. That scripture indicates that there will come a time when this earth cannot contain, this earth cannot support, this earth cannot continue uh, in the way that it is going, and that is biblically accurate. It is now being scientifically proven as accurate, and so much is going on within our lifetime because, hey, this is... This is the time when 90% of the biblical prophecy was talking about a day when the earth couldn't contain it anymore and that the temperature of religion and the temperature of you know, our tolerance towards one another and the temperature of uh, population and existence uh, was going to tip. And we talked about the definition of tipping point. Tipping point is the critical point in a situation, process, or system beyond which a significant an often unstoppable force affects and brings change. I want everyone to understand about the end of the age, biblical prophecy, the things that are come to, that are to come to pass. They are absolutely unstoppable. There is no government, there is no leader, there is no nation that can stop what God's going to do uh, in our world. So we're going to jump on into this today. Yesterday, I talked talk to you about four things that are going on in our world right now uh, that um, relate to Joel chapter 2. Uh, God has gathered his people from all the nations. He brought the Jews back and given them their nation back, 2,000 years of non-existence. And in 1948, uh, they became an established state again. Uh, the second thing was the division of the land of Israel. Israel keeps giving land for peace to its neighboring countries, but peace never comes. The land is being divided that was totally given uh, to God's people. Uh, number three, the four blood moons. Uh, we've seen three patterns of this uh, since 1949. Uh, we had not seen this before, 500 years before 49 and 500 years after the final blood moon of 2015. Uh, number four, worldwide anti-Semitism and hatred of Israel. The UN, the UN and the United Nations and the United States have censured Israel more than any other country in the world combined. Today we're going to talk about the Gog Magog War. Everybody hashtag live, hashtag recorded, hashtag shared. Come on everybody right now, hashtag live if you're joining us live, hashtag recorded if you're joining record, recorded, hashtag shared if you will put this out on your page. And now let's go crazy with the hearts and likes. Tear those things up. Da, 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 da. And guys, if you're watching maybe for the first time because it was in your news feed or someone tagged you or someone invited you to come to pray first, these hearts and these likes, which are trickling in but are about to go stinky crazy on here, uh, that is for you guys to let you know that we're glad that you're here and welcome to Pray First, a conversation with Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. right here on the Pastor Doug page. And we're going on two years. <sighs> Can you believe that? Okay, so here's some things about Israel, things that have to happen uh, before uh, the finality, before the bringing of the world to the valley of Jehoshaphat or Jehovah's judgment or Armageddon, if you will. One of the things is the Gog Magog War. Hashtag number one, Gog, G-O-G, dash Magog, M-A-G-O-G, War. The Gog Magog War. This is going to be a world at war. Now, there are regional wars that are happening to Israel ever since they took back possession of their land in 1948. You know, the Six-Day War and then the little skirmishes and they're always firing into Israel and they're always firing across the Gaza and, and all these things are going on over there. That's in Psalm chapter 83. So if you want to read about 
the regional wars that are taking place uh, that are signs of the end time, read Psalm chapter 83, Israel and its neighbors. But the Gog-Magog war is found in Ezekiel chapter 38, verses 2 through 9. Gog-Magog war, Ezekiel chapter 38, verses 2 through 9. I've got so many uh, pages open here. I'm going to have to find exactly where I... Here we go. There we go. Ezekiel. Woo! 38, verses 2 through 9. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, this is the God speaking to the prophet Ezekiel about a massive major war uh, at the end of days, the end of the age. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog. Hashtag Gog, G-O-G. Gog is a person or a people, I guess I should say, of the land of Magog. Okay, so Magog is the land. Gog is the man or the people. Magog is the land. The prince of Rosh, Mesheth, and Tubal, and prophesy against them. Okay, I want you to understand that Israel is a tiny, 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 tiny dot on the geographical map of the world. It is a small place surrounded by people that hate them and that is ever expanding and God says he's going to bring everybody from around the world and they will march on Israel to destroy it. Think about that as I read this. I will turn you around and put hooks in your jaws and lead you out with all of your army horses and horsemen. He says, look, you guys are all going to be coming down against Israel and you are those who are in opposition to me. You are anti the Christ. You see where we're going? You are anti the Christ. You are anti Jehovah, Yahweh. You are uh, at enmity with my people. You are not listening to my word, my gospel. You have not received my hope, my promise, my salvation. All of you nations who are marching on Israel to destroy it, I'm going to put a hook in your mouth. And the way that these people who were writing this saw this was when your donkey or your jackass didn't do what you wanted it to do and didn't go where you wanted to go and didn't follow where you wanted it to lead, you would stick a hook in his mouth and you would lead him around. God is basically saying, I will hook the jackasses and I will lead them where I want them to be and they will do what I want them to do. Okay, listen. He says, I will turn you around, I will put hooks in your jaws and lead you out with all of your army. So you're going to march on Jerusalem, you're going to march on Israel, I'm going to put hooks in your jaws. Listen to this. I'm going to lead you out with all of your army horses and horsemen, all splendidly clothed, and a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them. I want you to hashtag hook, hashtag jaw. He says, I'm going to lead you out with your bucklers, your, seal, your shields, all of them handling swords, Persia, Ethiopia, Libya are with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all of its troops, the house of Togomar from the far north and all of its troops, many people are with you. Prepare yourself and be ready, you and all of your companies that gather about you, and be on guard for them. After many days you will be visited in the latter years. Latter years is a reference to the end of the age, end times, you will come into the land of those brought back. Who are those that are brought back? The Jews, 1948, our lifetime. You will enter into the land of those who have been brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. They will be brought out from the nations, and now all of them dwell safely. Listen to this, verse 9. You will ascend coming like a storm, covering the land like a cloud. Remember the verses that says that in that day I will cause the sun to become dark and the moon to become blood. He says, you will ascend like a storm covering the land like a cloud, you and all your troops and all your many people with you. Now this war is already setting up and you may be saying, well, what does this have to do with me? Why should I care? Remember Matthew 24, 22 said, when you start seeing these things, look up, your redemption is near. Everybody hashtag redemption. 
Moses prayed in, not, in uh, Psalm chapter 90, verse 12, Lord, teach us to number our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. The reason we need to have God teach us to number our days, you know, to look at how significant time is, is because we live like we have forever, that we are, you know, um, that we're not mortal, that we're immortal. We live like our mortality is not at hand. We waste so much time. We use so much time in vain. We say so many words that are in vain. We do so many things that are in vain. And God says, listen, you're not living wisely with your time because you don't realize how short it is. Moses says, God, teach me to number my, my days, hashtag number my days, so that I may gain a heart of wisdom. When I realize how short my time is, I, the result ought to be that I make more wise choices and less foolish ones. Amen? So when you're looking at the end times and you're wondering, well, what does this have to do with me? It should incite in you a compelling to go out into the streets and the highways and the hedges to your jobs, your careers, your schools, to live a different life around, in front of, and behind the backs of people so that when others look at you, they don't ask you who is your president, what is your country, what is your denomination. They ask you what, what is different about you, who is your God. That has always been the plan of God that God's people, God's kingdom, would be seen as different, set apart, and blessed because of their relationship with him, that the outsider would look in and say, whoa, there's something different about their marriages. There's something different about their children. There's something different about their churches. There's something different about their responses. There's something different about their finances. There's something different about the way they respond and the way they react, that they would be looked upon. Guys, we need to be taught to number our days because there is an urgency to our days right now. We are in the times of, if, if you don't want to call it the, the end times or the last days, or it's the final countdown. Da -da 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 -da. We are at least in a time where we are ushering in the kingdom of God himself on earth as it is in heaven. You say, who are these nations that are talked about in Ezekiel chapter 38 when it says that they're all going to come down, the Gog and Magog? Gog and Magog, again, is a person or a people and a place. Uh, there are major role players, and a lot of people tell you that that is Russia because there's this straight line from Jerusalem to Moscow and all this stuff up to the north because it says up to the north. But guys, you're looking at a flat map, and a circular map doesn't give you the same north. If you go true north, you actually land in Crema, uh, which is also not Crema-like. Have yourself a merry little Crema. Uh, no, it's, um, Crema is a place, and it's also a place that's being talked about right now as a hotbed for anti-Semitism. So there is something to that. Now listen, Russia, China, America, all the big boys will play. God will put a hook in the jaw of everybody and bring them to. But no time in history has Russia or China attacked Israel for any reason. Reason being, Russia and China, for the most part, aren't anti-Semitic because they're not Muslim inclined. Okay, so now we're getting a little bit in a warm spot, a hot spot, and all this kind of spot. Remember that nations and people are not the problem. Religions and faith are not the problem. Spirits that lead them. I can't tell you how many people that call themselves Christians are not led by the Spirit. And all God's people said, amen. They're led by a Spirit, but it's not God. Iranians are not the problem. ISIS is. Uh, Iraqis are not the problem. It's their fundamentalist, uh, hateful. We'll get there in a minute. Gog and Magog. Some people say it's Russia. Some people say it's China, yet they have never. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9 tells us that the things that have happened will happen again. So if you look at all the people who have attacked Israel, you can get a better picture of it is the radical Muslim uh, who has feels like God, Allah, has called them to destroy Israel. Come here, come here. And guess what they say? To usher in the end. Woo, mercy. Gog, Magog, Russia, China, Persia. Listen, Persia, Iran. Uh, Iranians are not Arabs. Some people get that kind of mixed up and say, it's the Arabs and the, 
you know, the Iranians and uh, Iranians are Persian. They're they're not they're they're not Arabs. Uh, so, uh, the Sudan, Ethiopia, Northern Africa, Algeria, Turkey. All of those major players that are spoken about in a prophecy that's almost 3,000 years old is setting themselves up against a tiny nation in the middle. Israel. Come on, guys. No one can predict the future, but the one who controls the future. And when you look at these prophecies from 2,500, 3,000 years ago, you see the predictions to such divine accuracy that not only are is this power or this spirit able to predict or prophesy, it's obvious that he is controlling the outcome. God says, I put the hooks in. I control the future. I am the Lord of all. I decide when, where, and how. No man knows, but God knows. Why does he know? Because he decides. You can trust him. There shouldn't be a spirit of fear. There should be a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. You shouldn't be looking at the Middle East like, Ooh. you shouldn't be looking at Israel like, I wonder if they're going to blow Israel off the map. There's not a power on the face of the force of earth of the universe that can blow Israel off a map. That is God's chosen place. Listen, when they come to blow it off the map, God is going to expose and explode universe creative power from his lips to the ears of man oh my gosh the hairs on my arm standing up because you know i don't have many or any hairs on my head if you missed any of this go back and listen to all of it because you've got to have all of this to understand what's going on ezekiel come here come here come here when ezekiel prophesied concerning this Gog, Magog war, when Ezekiel prophesied concerning Persia, Sudan, uh, the Sudan, Algeria, Northern Africa, Ethiopia, uh, when he talked about Turkey and Tonga and he talked about Iran and Ru all these places, when Ezekiel talked about the coming war against Israel, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, there were no Islamic states. When God told Ezekiel who would be the enemy, there were no Islamic states. Islam did not exist until the 7th century. It wasn't a radicalized religion. It was an eternal spirit that had set itself against God known as Lucifer and the angels who followed him, the spirits that were setting themselves up against not only God, but God's people, Lucifer and his demonic uh, throngs of dark angels are coming against God and his angels of light who hate, come here, come here, come here these dark spirits who hate uh, God and all of his people. They're coming against them. They're coming against them because they hate them. Listen, the reason they hate them is because they see Jesus. Now, some of us are going to be completely safe from these spirits because they don't recognize Jesus. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. The seventh century Islam, Islamic states began to form Ezekiel in this time when he made this declaration about the people that were going to come down against Israel. There were none of them. They didn't exist. And I want to say this again. Israel. Israel's enemy is not Iran and Iranians per se. It's not the Persians necessarily. No more than it is American uh you know, let's see, Satanist. It's not the Americans. It's not, it's, it, Israel has a bigger enemy. We wrestle not, come on, come on, come on, come on. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against rulers and principalities of dark places. Rulers and principalities of dark places. It's not Iran. It's not an Iranian who is the problem. It's the Islamic Republic who is carrying out the plan. It is ISIS who is carrying out the plan, who believe in their spirit, believe in their soul written in their holy book, 
that Allah has called them to martyr themselves, do anything necessary to destroy Israel and usher in the end. Uh, Y'all are awful quiet out there today, so I want you to hashtag some yep, yeps. I see a whole bunch of people in here live, but very few of you are moving. I think some of y'all are just like, I want to usher you back to the point of this. Lord, teach us to number our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom, so that we can make more wise choices than foolish ones, so that when people look at us, they see the Messiah. When people look at us, they see different marriages. When people look at us, they see a different uh, man. They see a different woman. When people look at us, they see integrity. When people look at us, they see honesty. When people look at us, they see love. When people look at us, they see forgiveness. When people look at us... They see something's different about them. Woo, that just, that gives me chills. Isn't it something that 25-year-old prophecies are this accurate and all the nations that are mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 38 exist today, though they were not Islamic nations then? I mean, it's, yeah, 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 Stormy, that's right. It is mind-blowing how accurate this is, and they're all united against and hate Israel, just like Scripture says they will. When all these nations are dragged by God into the land of Israel, Israel won't fire a bullet in the Gog-Magog war. Pretty crazy, huh? When all of these nations are dragged against Israel, when all of these are led by a hook, when all of these are brought into the valley of Jehoshaphat, or the Lord's judgment, Israel will not fire a bullet, but the destruction will be so great that it will take seven months to clean up and bury the dead and seven years to burn all the weapons. That's not me. That's Ezekiel chapter 38 and Ezekiel chapter 39. Why will they not fire a shot? Because God is saying to the nations who mock him, God is saying to the nations that mock light, God is saying to the spirits of darkness, I'm your master, you're my donkey. I stick the hook in you, and though you think that you've made your plans against Israel, and though you think that you've made your dark plan against my people, and though you think that you set the blueprint, the pattern, and you have waged the war, I, God, have drug you to the Middle East with a hook. And just when you think that all your plans succeeded, ask your God, Lucifer, just how well it works out when you try to drag God by a hook. Ask Lucifer how much uh, encouragement he received when he saw my son Jesus die on the cross. Why don't you ask Lucifer about the last time he executed a plan and executed a man and executed God's son and how well that turned out for him three days later. Why don't you ask God, why don't you ask Jesus how well your plans work out when you take Judas and Caiaphas and Pilate and you bring the nations of the world against God. God's chosen one, against God's elect. How about you ask the spirits of darkness that have been assigned over Rodney and Brandy and Amanda and Tammy and Barbie and Renee and how about you ask him just how good things work out when the spirit of darkness comes against the spirit of light and the blood of Jesus sets captives free and the truth heals people and sets them apart. How about you ask, just in case you were wondering Gog and Magog and Syria and Turkey and the Sudan and Northern Africa and Russia and China and the United States. How about you ask God just how things work out when you think that you have stormed on a place and God takes the mountains to the ground and blood fills the rivers and the skies go dark and when the war is over, God's people hasn't fired a bullet but that God himself has crushed the enemies on the mountains of Israel and given them a funeral plot and a graveyard in the mountains of Israel that takes seven months to bury them and seven years to clean up because Israel will not fire a shot. God will put a hook in their mouth, drag them to the mountains of Israel and kill them himself. That's what scripture says. And this is happening. It's beginning to happen. So tomorrow uh, we're going to talk about Point number two, and point number two is, is the seven-year covenant with the Antichrist that Israel will make. 
the seven-year covenant with the Antichrist that Israel will remake. And then either the, probably the day after that, we'll talk about the rebuilding of the temple. We might get to that tomorrow, but the temple will be rebuilt. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will give us all a spirit of the Holy Spirit. No spirit, but your Holy Spirit have your way in us. No sensationalism, no fear, no predictive talk about he's coming back tomorrow and it's going to be the Antichrist is Jared from Subway. And Father, I just pray right now that you, you just wipe off all that stupidity and that we would number our days that that our response to this message starts now. It's not what somebody else is going to do. It's not what some other nation is going to do, what some other country is going to do, what some other governor is going to do, what, what war is going to happen. That our part and our place in this is that we love the people around us right now and that we show them the gospel through our actions, our words, and our integrity. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Love you guys. I got to get out of here. Bye. Hit the hearts, hit the likes. Please share this. Man, I know y'all scared to share this. But this isn't foolishness and craziness. I'm not talking like, you know, Dianetics by L. Ron Hubbard or, you know, some other sensational preacher on TV. We're, I'm reading you the Word of God. And uh, get this out. Bye, guys. I love you.